It's always wonderful to see you. My name is Michael Williams, Pro90D founder and speech coach. And guess what we're going to talk about today? That's right. We're going to talk about how to overcome nervousness and boost your self-confidence. And this is the third part in a series. So I want you to go back and watch the other two parts because this builds off of those first two sessions. So you're probably wondering, well, overcome nervousness when and how and why? Well, often when people have to do things like presentations or interviews or meetings with important people, with people in authority, with people that they don't know, they can become nervous and anxious and this can interfere with their performance. Have you ever had this happen to you? It's probably happened to all of us. But just because you feel anxious or nervous, listen, doesn't mean that you have to perform poorly. You can perform quite competently, quite well, even though you might feel a little bit nervous or even a lot nervous. And so we're going to be talking about the third part in this series of how you can do that. Let me just give you a brief review of what we've gone over so far. So in the first part, we kind of did an overview of everything, but we focused on something called reframing. This is where you might be feeling nervous or anxious, but you actually tell yourself that you're feeling excited, that you're feeling energized. And you are able to do this and someone says, well, that doesn't really work. Well, it is working. It already has worked because when a person tells themselves, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, they, also, they become more nervous and more anxious, right? So they're, they're reinforcing something, they're affirming something, they're self-talking, something that's going to drain their energy. When you reframe, you're putting another frame on how you're currently feeling and what you're thinking. So you're just telling yourself, I feel energized. I feel excited about this. And this can help you, believe it or not, can help you perform much, much better, calm down much faster, and just simply perform better. So that's reframing briefly, but go back and watch the video. The second one is reminding yourself. Reminding yourself of what? Reminding yourself to breathe, believe it or not. Reminding yourself to slow down. Reminding yourself that you don't really care. It doesn't really matter who's present. You're still in control. You're still going to take your time and say what you want to say. It's also reminding yourself of Vic and Rick, which I won't go into in this video, but I encourage you to go back and watch the other video because that's a beautiful, very, very simple framework for you to keep in mind to help you stay focused and stay engaged and say the things that you want to say. Now today, we're going to talk about rehearsing, rehearsing. So someone says, well, Michael, why do I need to rehearse? I've prepared my slides or I already know what I want to say. Why should I rehearse? And how is that going to uh, help me to not be nervous? How is that going to boost my confidence? So that's what we're going to talk about today. One of the things that I want you to know, when I say rehearse, I don't mean that you're memorizing everything that you need to say. And we'll revisit this in just a few months. But in fact, I teach that you probably don't want to memorize everything that you want to say. But what are the benefits? What are some of the benefits of rehearsing, even if you kind of know the content. When you and I rehearse, when we practice something, what we're doing is we're activating the same neurological network that would be activated if we were actually participating in that event. So if you were actually in the presentation, on the Zoom call, in the interview, right, in that meeting, and you were speaking, doing whatever you were doing, right, there's a certain neural network, there are certain parts of our brain that are being used, that are activated, that are communicating with each other, that's managing that activity, managing every aspect of that activity, right? When you rehearse, when you practice, when you try to put yourself in that situation, guess what you're doing? You're activating the same neural networks, the same areas of your brain that manage that activity. Now, why is that important? Well, that's important because it's like you're actually there you are practicing, you're repeating the behavior. And that's important because that's where confidence comes from. That's where self-confidence comes from. Let me explain. When you and I have done something over and over again, or at least we've done it a few times, your brain goes back and says, oh, we did this before. Even if you didn't perform that well, it says, well, you know, we had the courage to try this. We did it. Maybe we didn't perform that well, but we did it. So the next time, you have a little bit more courage. 
you feel just a little calmer, just a little more relaxed, a little more confident to try it again, to do it again. Now, what if you did well? Well, then your brain goes back and say, wow, we did well that time. And so we'll probably do well again. So it goes back, it looks at your previous experiences, at your memories, and uses this to predict future performance. So you feel more confident about doing something in the future, right? You trust that you can do it because you've done it before, or at least you've tried it before. You believe, you have faith that you can do it again because you did it before. When you rehearse or you practice, it's like doing it over and over and over. Every time you practice, every time you rehearse, your brain is creating a, a, an experience, a memory of you doing that, which boosts your self-confidence and causes you to feel at least a little less nervous or anxious. And if you go back and use the other things we talked about, it will further reduce or at least reduce the negative impact that feeling that way can have on you. I hope that that makes sense. So these are some of the reasons why it's important to rehearse. Let's talk about now just some very, very simple things about how to rehearse. So you can break your rehearsal up into very, very small chunks, very, very small chunks. If you have to prepare slides, okay. If you have to have notes, okay. Give an example, just work with a lady, she's an author. She had a pretty major uh, presentation that she needed to do and she had some podcasts and live interviews. And so she's used to reading, but she didn't want to do that. She wanted to be more engaged with her audience. Um, and then she had a chance to actually get up and use the mic and not really need any notes. So I have a system, I have a structure that we use to help her prepare for that. And she did, and she did extremely well, and she felt very good about her performance. One of the reasons is that she didn't memorize what she wanted to say. She internalized it. There's a little bit of an overlap there, but when you memorize something, you actually put more pressure on yourself to have to remember exactly what you said. And if you don't memorize it, but you write it down, now you're going to be reading and it's probably not going to be as engaging as it could be if you internalized it. Another benefit of internalizing is it gives you flexibility and freedom. So you feel more relaxed, you feel more comfortable because you have more options. You're freer to say what you want to say. You're saying what you want to say. It's going to be very, very structured, very precise, very concise. But you can say what you want to say with more freedom and flexibility. So you take the pressure off yourself. So when you rehearse, you don't have to memorize everything and you rehearse in small chunks. Just So let me just let me just practice the opening. Let me practice the introduction. Let me practice the first few sentences. Then later on you practice the next part and then the next part, next part. And then you keep do this. You keep doing that. So you're always preparing throughout the day, throughout the week for whatever that important meeting or call or interview is. So that by the time you get ready to do it, you actually feel more comfortable with the material because you've been practicing it not once, but many times, right? Many times, driving, working out or whatever. And you're not tied to notes. You're not tied to sitting. You can practice while you're driving. Does this make sense? So I have a whole system that goes over this. It's very simple, but it's very effective. It's very effective. So rehearsing has many benefits. We just talked about a few. One, one of which is that it helps you feel more confident because you've done it before, even if it's by yourself or it's in your mind. You also want to rehearse on video so you can watch it. That's a whole nother session that we'll do. Rehearse it on video. When you rehearse it without notes, but you use our system, you're able to effectively engage whoever you're speaking with, yet be very organized, right? Remember Vic and Rick. When you rehearse in smaller chunks, you don't feel overwhelmed, like I have to go over the whole thing. Right? You just rehearse it in small chunks consistently. Okay, So rehearsal is very, very important. It adds to our mix the three things that we shared with you to do to overcome nervousness and boost your confidence. Remember, it's okay to feel nervous. It's very normal. But you can reframe it and still perform competently, still perform confidently. So what was the first thing that we talked about? It was reframing. And then the second one, which also started with an R, was what? Reminding yourself to do certain things, right? And then the third one was rehearsing, rehearsing what it is 
that you want to talk about, but not necessarily memorizing. So I'd like for you to like this video, uh, share a comment. If you like, ask me something that you want me to address in future videos. Once again, my name is Michael Williams, founder and speech coach with Pro90D.com, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.